Hey everyone, take a look at the device in my hands. At first glance, it looks like your standard everyday Android smartphone. The lock screen is familiar, the clock is right where you'd expect it, and the gesture to unlock. As I swipe up and enter the passcode, you'll start to see that something is different. The app drawer, the icons, and the overall fluidity feel unique. Let's head straight into the settings to see what's actually powering this machine. Navigating through the system menu and tapping on about, we see the truth. This is post-market OS. For those who don't know, this is a real Linux distribution designed specifically for smartphones. We are running this on the Xiaomi Poco F1, and it's not just a skin, it's a complete architectural shift. You can see the system details here, the kernel, the storage, and the hardware information, all laid out in a way that feels more like a laptop than a phone. Biggest advantages of running one a real Linux OS on a phone is the ability to run desktop-grade software. Let me show you something incredible. I've installed Blender on this device. Yes, you heard that right. The professional 3D creation suite. While it's not perfectly smooth due to the heavy resource demands of 3D rendering, if you are a developer or a Linux enthusiast, the terminal is your home. On this setup, we have a fully functional console. Let's perform a quick test. I'm going to install a package directly from the command line by typing sudo apk add git. The system asks for my root password. I'll punch in 147147 and watch as it fetches the metadata and installs Git in real time. This isn't a simulation, this is a real package manager at work. To monitor how the system is handling these tasks, I can fire up HTOP. Look at that. Real-time CPU usage, memory management, and process tracking all within the palm of my hand. The Poco F1's Snapdragon 845 is still a beast when it comes to handling these Linux tasks. Now, I know what you're thinking. If I switch to Linux, will I lose my favorite apps? The answer is a resounding no. Thanks to Waydroid, we can run a full Android environment inside Postmarket OS. I've installed all the essentials, Instagram, WhatsApp, X, formerly Twitter, and YouTube. I'm using a vanilla version of Android here to keep things fast and private. For those who still need Google services, I've integrated MicroG, which provides the necessary APIs without the heavy tracking of standard Google Play services. It's the perfect middle ground between privacy and functionality. To manage my Android apps, I use the up to down App Store. It's a great way to stay updated without needing a Google account. Whether it's social media or utility apps, the installation process is seamless. The file manager is another highlight. It functions exactly like a desktop file explorer. You can use gestures to select multiple files at once, just like dragging a mouse on a PC. It makes organizing downloads and system files incredibly intuitive. And when it comes to the web, we have the full Firefox browser. I'll do a quick search on DuckDuckGo for hello, and you can see it loads quite well. The experience is snappy, and because it's a desktop class browser, you don't get forced into those simplified mobile sites unless you want to. Finally, let's look at the quick settings panel. Swipe down and you have total control over your connectivity, brightness, and volume. There's even a toggle for the torch, which works perfectly. Even the SIM card is recognized and functional, making this a viable daily driver for the brave. This setup is the ultimate proof that our smartphones are capable of so much more than what the big manufacturers allow. Let's start the installation process. We need to enable developer options. Navigate to your settings go to About Phone and find the build number. As many of you know, tapping this seven times unlocks the developer options. This is a critical step. Once unlocked, head into System and then Developer Options. Scroll down until you find USB Debugging. Toggle this on and accept the prompt. This allows our PC to send low-level commands to the phone's processor. It is also assumed at this point that your bootloader is already unlocked. Without an unlocked bootloader, none of this would be possible. With the phone prepared, let's move over to the PC. Our first stop is the official Postmarket OS website. This is the heart of the project. We are looking for the install section where we can find the community maintained builds for our specific hardware. The Poco F1 goes by the codename Beryllium in the development world. 
Navigating through the device wiki, we can see the support status. It's important to check this to see what features like Wi-Fi, GPS, or GPU acceleration are currently working. The community has done a stellar job bringing the Poco F1 into the well-supported category. In the download directory for Beryllium, you'll notice several options for the user interface, UI. You can choose between GNOME Mobile, Fosh, or Plasma Mobile. For this installation, I'm opting for a build that offers a balance of touch friendliness and desktop-like power. I'll navigate into the specific date folder to find the most recent stable image. You'll need the boot image and the root F's system image. Download these files and keep them in a dedicated folder on your desktop for easy access. To actually push these images onto the phone, we need the Android SDK platform tools. A quick Google search takes us to the official Android developers page. Need the version for Windows. Scroll down, accept the terms and conditions, and download the zip file. This toolkit contains adb.exe and fastboot.exe, which are the primary tools for any mobile developer or enthusiast. Without these, our PC wouldn't know how to talk to the phone's bootloader. Once the platform tools are downloaded, extract the contents into your postmarket OS folder. It's always best to keep your OS images and your flashing tools in the same directory to avoid complicated file paths in the terminal. Now, open your command prompt, CMD. I like to navigate directly to the folder path. You can see our images are ready, the boot.img and the large system file. Now, it's time to put the phone into fast boot mode. Connect your phone to the PC via a high quality USB cable. In the terminal, type fast boot devices to confirm the connection. If you see a serial number, you're good to go. The first major command is fast boot flash user data. We are going to drag and drop our system image file into the terminal to automatically fill in the path. This file contains the entire Linux file system. This is the longest part of the process as the PC sends over two gigabytes of data to the phone's internal storage. You can see the terminal sending the sparse user data in chunks. Wait for the OK message for each part. Once the system partition is flashed, we need to flash the kernel and the boot instructions. Type fastboot flash boot and drag the corresponding boot a.img file into the terminal. This happens almost instantly because the file size is much smaller. This boot image tells the Poco F1 hardware how to initialize the Linux kernel instead of the standard Android kernel. With both the system and the boot partitions updated, the heavy lifting is done. We are now ready to see if our work has paid off. The final command is the most exciting, fast boot reboot. As the device restarts, the familiar Poco logo appears, but it is quickly replaced by the postmarket OS splash screen. This confirms the kernel has successfully loaded. After a brief loading sequence, we are greeted by the login screen. I'll enter the default passcode, 147147, and just like that, the Plasma mobile environment begins to render. We have successfully replaced a proprietary Android system with a true open source Linux OS. The interface is clean, responsive, and ready for exploration. Welcome to the future of mobile computing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.